Hi, welcome to another episode of Comms 101. I think we might be a little bit past the uh, 101 at this point, but I don't have a better name for it. So, hi, my name's Rob, and I work in the broadcast television world um, in a couple different seats in the truck, depending on the day. One of the things I like the most is comms. So, I started this uh, weblog, I don't know, blog vlog video series yeah that's what it is it's a video series about comms and we've been through a bunch of different things at a bunch of different levels but today we're going to be talking at a pretty high level about AZ Edit. AZ Edit is the configuration software that's used for um, the administration of the RTS or Bosch line of intercoms um, their matrix intercoms this is uh, the Cronus, the Zeus, the Odin, the Atom, and AZ Edit is the software that's used for the kind of base level configuration of the of the comms. There's other programs that are needed for other aspects such as trunking and IP configuration. I think that's about it these days. But uh, I wanted to start with some assumptions for this video that we're going to be doing as our first episode of, of AZ Edit. So the assumptions are as follows. You have a functioning intercom. Your intercom works and you are doing day-to-day -day maintenance or daily need configuration on it. The second is that you have a functioning connection or normally functioning connection to your intercom from your PC. Um, I feel like the stuff before those assumptions could be like an episode zero or a whole lot of other episodes because commissioning an intercom uh, is or initial engineering setup of an intercom is way different and today we're just talking about administrating the intercom um, from a user standpoint. And what we're going to cover in this episode is pretty much the status of the intercom that you can tell from AZ Edit. Um, we're being episode one, we're going to not get very far. But um, let's jump right into my screen and see what we can see. All right, here's the screen that you may see when you open up uh, AZ Edit for the first time on your functioning and connected system. I say that it, you may see, I, I need to stop at this point and say there are lots of options that may affect what you see at different points. The um, the intercom that is, is a very complex thing that serves many industries and so they have a lot of different um, setup scenarios that, that, that can be covered in this uh, by this intercom. So if yours doesn't look exactly like this, um, it's not like you're doing it wrong, you're just doing it differently. So what we have here is we have a... Oh, I think I need to stop again. The It's important to understand the relationship in between the configuration PC, the file that may be saved on that PC as a configuration and the file that is currently running in the intercom. These are basically three different um, file states that could that could all exist at the same time. You might have truck nominal or truck zero or baseline as a file saved on your computer. You could have that file open on your computer and be making changes to it. And you could have another configuration that's currently running on your intercom, all three at the same time. And uh, a saved file, a working file, and a loaded file are, they're all different things and they need to be understood. So that'll come up again in a little bit. But what we can tell here from our, our AZ edit blank window that is honestly not connected to anything. 
it would look almost this ex exactly like this if I was sitting on an airplane seat in airplane mode and just had this open. So, uh, okay, Rob, how do you know anything about anything? Well, the first most informative telltale sign about anything in AZ Edit is this right down here. These green balls are chattering, and I think that I don't exactly know the scientific status of what's going on, but I think that there is bi-directional serial communication going to the intercom and coming back from the intercom. Okay, but there's nothing on your sheet right there. How do you know you're not really connected to that intercom? Are you looking at a blank intercom? No, I'm not. I am not connected because this little socket has not been plugged together. All right. So before we connect this, let's look at the files uh, a little bit. Um, we could start a new file. This is all Windows typical, right? We could open a file. We could merge a file. Uh, that's pretty advanced, and I don't want to do that. We could save this file. We could actually print this file. Uh, we could connect. And once we connect, we can do things like load, send, activate, and abort. All right. So let's go. Uh, and open. Let's look at let's look at the idea of opening a file. So on this computer, I have on this computer, I have two files that are built uh, in this default location of where these files save. Um, I have a Cronus as pulled from the 20 footer that was saved. Well, it was actually saved a couple days ago. Oh, today before I started this video. And then it was uh, there's another one, Comps 101, AZ Edit 101. Uh, Cronus upon initial config, uh, connection. So here's what I want to do. I want to uh, connect to this intercom. When you wake up your computer, it may already be connected. You may not have this option, so I'll smash it. And if you are connected to the intercom, it'll look like this. Well, we can no longer connect. It's already connected. All right. And let's start kind of cruising around and see what else we can tell about our connection status to this intercom. Once again our green balls are kind of chattering down here and we do not have a connection button. All right, So we are connected to the intercom. The, um, the thing I'd like to show you first is this down here the key panel status window, the master controller status window, and the I.O. cards. All right, Those are basically the three uh, active components that make up the intercom. The master controller, or the, the brain, the I.O. cards, which are modular slot cards that can be put into the brain, and then the key panels that attach to it. So day-to-day -day type things, we're going to think about key panels, and let's go see what's attached. We press key panels, and up comes 9 not 10, 11, and 12. Um, I think I plugged that in wrong and that tape should have been plugged into 10. But what this tells you is there is a key panel here connected to 9. There is something connected to 10, 11. Ooh, look, it's a TIFF. It's been auto-recognized as a TIFF. And then there is another key key on 12. All right, so I have two KPs and a TIFF. And since this uh, errors were cleared, we did have tape plugged into 10, but then it disappeared. If you want to, you can press clear, and it will do all ports, error counts, bad cut status, right? And you can press OK. And of course, it clears it out. All right. So this is the first piece of status information that we can learn. We could also learn something about master con uh, the master controller here. Um, it is OK. <laughs> Great, thanks. And then we can learn something about this intercom and the cards that are connected to it. And we see that this Cronus frame has three analog input-output cards, each of which are, compatible, are capable of eight connections. And they are installed in slots 1, 2, and 3. And so we should have up to 1 through 24. If you ever like have um, a card in there that is your Arvon card or something and you have to 
put something in a certain range, you would look to this IO card status to figure out where your Arvon range is, and then you would make those um, uh, connections there. All right, so now let's go back to keep uh, KPs here. And we're going to go up and get to something that is uh, actually connected. So here's one thing I want to show you about statuses. Do you see this number one, how it's red? All right, well, let's go to number nine. I put in the number nine, and I press Enter. And it takes me to panel number nine. And look, this nine is green. Let's go back to KPs here attached. One has nothing attached. It is red for not attached. And nine is attached, and it's green. We have live real-time serial communication with a KP panel or other device that is connected there. Now, just, just a thought. Um, your four-wire connections that are audio in and out of a port, they're always going to show red. They're not going to show you whether there's something serial connected because there is nothing serial connected. How about that? All right, so let's look um, a little bit more status, what we can learn about status here. I can tell you that this key, number 10, the listen side of key 10 on this person's intercom is latched on listen. This person is listening to CCU2. So if this producer is saying, oh gosh, why am I hearing uh, uh, Roddy on um, CCU2? Why am I always hearing when he talks? He's calling out stuff and I'm hearing it. He's, he's stuck talking to me. No, no, Mr. Producer. You are the one listening to him, and you can tell that by this uh, button, the red ball indicating listen on button 10. All right, um, I've done something here. Didn't mean to, but I did. And so we'll go talk about that, and then we'll probably wrap up this lesson. This yellow uh, box here, this piece of status means an unsent change, okay? so. Uh, let's do this real quick. Let's take out CCUs 3, 4, and 5. Uh, backspace, tab, backspace, tab, backspace, tab. Look at all those things that have been changed. Now, let's go ahead and at the to end this lesson, we're going to have these changes sent to the intercom. Do you think I should go over here and press save? Well, it depends on what you want to do. If you want to save the file to the computer, then you press save. If you want to send the file to the intercom, then we're going to press activate. And this is where we're going to come into that third file type. So we'll press activate. It's going to ask us, do you really want to make these changes? Yeah, I made changes to key panel 9. I'm going to send that sent serially over the intercom and now we have CCUs 3, 4, and 5 that are not there and there's no yellow window to indicate that there's been a change. Alright, that's the end of episode 1. Um, questions, comments, direction for where we go from here? Alright, looking forward to it. And as always, if you have found this helpful, you can like, you can subscribe, you can ask questions here on YouTube. Um, I really do want this to be about you um, and getting the most information out to you guys. So hope you've enjoyed it. We'll see you soon.